Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our Series 8 VGC content, playing today a Duskmane Necrozma team. Very excited about this and I have to give a shout out to my good friend Nigel Wormseye, who has actually passed me his Duskmane Necrozma team, which kind of inspired a lot of ideas behind this one. So big shout out to Nigel. Um, this isn't the exact build that he put together, um, but as I said, inspired a lot of ideas. Ideas. and there's some tricks to this team that aren't apparent on team preview we'll get into those as we get into the battles today but as always there will be a poker piss down in the description below and if you stick around till the end of the episode there will be a rental code for you guys to try this team out for yourself so without further ado let's get into the battles and find our first opponent of the episode <laughs> So first up today, we've got Marco playing a team of Tyranitar, Zacian, Rillaboom, Articuno, the Kanto form, uh, Urshifu, and Incineroar. So this is going to be an interesting team. I'm not really sure what to make of the Articuno here, but um, obviously great to see. Gen 1 Pokemon. Uh, what are we looking at? Speed control, you've got Airstream on the Articuno. I'm not really 100% sure if it gets Tailwind, so that could be a possibility for sure. Got Intimidate, you've got the Urshifu there that can cause Necrozma a few problems. Tyranitar as well, something we need to be a little bit careful of. Zacian, of course, um, is going to be the big one of my opponent's team. So we're going to we're kind of going to need to, to utilize Incineroar in this match for sure. Um, I think if we can get our Trick Room up, you know, we're going to be in a really good spot thing is though you can probably see my opponent leading with their incineral uh, to prevent that um so i think maybe like indeedy necrozma guarantees our trick room up like 100 percent we'll bring incineral in the back and then maybe landorus isn't bad the double intimidate could be useful against pretty much mostly a physical team outside of the articuno uh, we just need to be a bit careful of but I mean if we get Necrozma in a decent position in Trick Room we should be all right okay so we'll lock in with these we'll get going there's an argument with the Tapu Fini could be useful here but there's a good chance that the Rillaboom could uh, see some play as well in this match you know it's it's going to be there to uh, to you know disrupt our psychic terrain it's going to be something that my opponent can utilize uh, to take away the advantage of us not being able to be faked out you know so Lots of things to consider. Okay, well, we're seeing Zacian and Articuno come up for my opponent. Oh, here we've got, like, the option to just get our Trick Room up if we want. And it puts us in a pretty awesome position, to be honest, because... Really, I don't know what my opponent kind of does uh, if we get the Trick Room up. Unless Articuno gets in prison in Trick Room. I'm sure the Kanto variant doesn't get Trick Room though. I think it's only the, the Galarian variant. Um, and I don't really want to get stung by that. But we'll, we'll go for the Follow Me. The other option is, obviously, because neither Pokemon really pressure Dr. Necrozma. So we've got the option where we can bring in, just bring in Incineroar and Trick Room here. Um... And that's still not a bad play because then we take away the attack boost from the Zacian. We uh, are going to see the Articuno switch out, obviously in a, in a tough spot as we see the Incineroar come in for my opponent. But that's kind of fine. They switch out before us, so we're going to be able to get our Intimidate onto both of their Pokemon as opposed to them just getting it onto one of ours. Um, I don't know what the Zacian is going to do. Maybe substitute here. That could be a nice option for them. It'll kind of get around the Trick Room. Um... For them at least, you know, for one turn. So we'll see what we'll see what they do. I'm just going for Behemoth Blade. So I'll go on for that into the indeed he wants to remove a redirection, I guess. No, going into Necrozma. Okay, well it still does a decent amount, you know. Uh, like just neutral damage. Does a decent a decent chunk. Um but we're in not too bad a spot because we've got the option to, well, we can't fake out, we can't fake out. I can parting shot. I think what we'll do is we'll parting shot out with Zacian. I want to reset. Um, yeah, what we'll do is we'll get Indeedy back onto the field. I want to reset our Intimidate drop from the opposing um, Incineroar. Now the only drawback here would be if they parting shot onto our Incineroar and we go before them. Okay, well, we're going to see Gortrum come out. Okay, well, this is still all right. I guess the grassy tree ain't going to come up, which I don't mind too much, to be honest. Um, 
Yeah, the only issue would be I, I'm kind of hoping that they go for either a flare blitz or a parting shot into uh, Dust Man across my. That would be the the thing that we want to see. And the grassy terrain recovery would be super useful. There's no way my opponent goes for a, a flare blitz into the Dust Man across my. What was the incinerator slot? They do go for the will o -Wisp, though, which is very interesting. Okay, well, it's a good job that we uh, we made that switch. Now, my opponent doesn't really have any kind of ways to mitigate. Uh, hmm. I mean, if we had the Psychic Terrain up, we'd be in a much better spot. It's just the fact that we've got Rillaboom now on the field, and it can fake out, and we can get will o -Wisp, which isn't ideal. Um... Although, are we going to be slow? We're not going to be slower than the Incineral under Trick Room. And they're doing a great job at like stalling out our Trick Room turns, in all honesty. Um, what could we do? We have to switch in Incineral here, to be honest. It's just a fake out. Pressure is just too much for us. Um, we could get an Expanding Force off, I guess. Or we could switch. I think we'll switch to Landorus here. Gives us a bit of, a better opportunity to get the psychic train back onto the field ah this is tricky this is so tricky like i don't want to lose this match but we've got to be patient i think we're going to be in a position to get our trick room up again um with knowing with what my opponent's got and zassian coming back in no will-o-wisp coming out onto the field okay well we're going to see out kuno which is kind of fine they're going to have the pressure um I just hope we don't see a grassy glide. That would be the the, the kind of the, the drawback to bringing um, Landris onto the field right now. I think the big thing for us as well is to try and deal with the Incineroar. And this is one of the drawbacks, I guess, with Dustman Necrozma is you've got to really kind of um, accept the fact that um, Incineroar and Intimidate are going to be two things that really, really make it difficult to, to utilize. Um, I think we're parting shot here onto this one, and I think we get indeed he back onto the field now. Yeah, because I'd imagine the Incineroar comes back onto the field. Yeah, okay, this is fine. I don't know what the Articuno is going to go for. Maybe it protects here. It's not in the best position against Incineroar. But we'll get Ndidi back onto the field. The problem is the, the Rillaboom can come back onto the field at any point. And it's the Will-O-Wisp, the problem, the Will-O-Wisp. The fake out Will-O-Wisp is not what we want. That's the board position we kind of have to try and avoid. So we get the parting shot off into the Articuno, which is always useful. Um, and at least we've got the Intimidate, both Intimidates in the back. Um, and like I said at the very start, you know, my opponent's kind of main strategy here is going to be uh going down a physical route so if we can preserve those intimidates the best possible uh, it's going to make things a bit easier for us see this see the ice beam into the ndd critical hit not really what we want to be seeing and the burn chipping away but we're in a position now where we can max quake help in hand max quake into the incineral and just mm, how many turns of trick room we can't help in hand. We've got one turn of Trick Room. Do we max here or do we just bide our time a little bit? Because we could max Quake. Hmm. And we could max Quake, just redirect. Or we could go for Sunsteel Strike, might not be a bad option, actually, because whatever comes in for the Articuno here. Yeah, I think we go after the Articuno, pull away the Will-O-Wisp, pull away the Parting Shot. Okay, and whatever comes in, if it is going to be the Rillaboom, at least we get the Defense Boost to take us forward into the next turn, which is always useful. Um, and then potentially have... Yeah, then we'll get Incineroar in, and then the Fake Out Support next to the Cosmo for the following turn. And the defense boost is super useful. Super useful. So. Like the Articuno, it's a weird Pokemon because it's not something I've really seen too much of. And I doubt I'll see too much of going forward. But obviously, it's got good, you know, uh, offensive pressure, 
with the ice type attack, but its speed's not great. Um, we do see a Darkest Lariat. Is this going to be enough to take us down from the range that we are with the Cobra Berry? Potentially. Yeah, oh, the burn will... Uh, well, the burn. The burn should take us down. I mean, the burn might take us down. I won't complain if we can keep Ndidi on the field. I will say that. And I kind of prefer the grassy terrain to be on the field than... Um, we might just hang on. And then we force my opponent. Um, well, I think whatever we do, I think we max guard and we switch in Incineroar this next turn. Yeah. Uh, max guard. And we switch in Incineroar. Yeah. Because you've got to think as well, what Pokemon is my opponent going to max here? Because it's going to be difficult. Like, the, the the standout one to me right now would be the Incineroar. It feels like it's probably the best option for my opponent. So that could be potentially something that we do see. Because I can't really see the Rillaboom going for it. I can't see the Articuno going for it. The Grassy Glide coming out. No fake out. But, I mean, you don't really need the fake out. Life or boom. And there's the Will-O-Wisp. So, I mean, we can... Got a couple of options here. I mean, we can go Fake Out into Incineroar. Max Quake into that slot. There's always the risk that we see the Articuno come in. Um, there. Which would be which would be super bad. Super bad. Um, do we double into it? Because I don't want to waste the max move. Because this is our last one. So we need to make sure that we're, we're, we're making the most of it. Um, or we could get rid of the, the Rillaboom. I think the Incineroar is too important for them. In all honesty. There's a big part of me that wants to Steel Spike. And go for Flare Blitz into the Incineroar. Should we make the play? Should we make that play? No. 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 Let's just go for this. Let's just play it a little bit safer. Yeah, they don't switch out. Okay, okay. We don't overthink it. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's really good. And they don't care about the knockoff. You get rid of our berry. It's fine at this point. We just want this this damage onto the Incineroar. It's not going to pick... Oh, is it going to pick up the knockoff? Probably not. Oh, it does. Okay. Uh, Dismay Necrozma, surprising us all. So that's really good. And now my opponent, you know, we've got the special defense boost, which is really useful. Because Articuno can't really touch us anyway for super effective damage. Rillaboom's minus one. We've got Landorus in the back. They've got Zacian to come in for sure. But Zacian's going to come in. The Behemoth Blade, minus one. Um, on neutral, sorry. It's not doing a great deal. There's no way for us to proc our weakness policy right now. But I don't feel like we're in too much danger because I think if Zacian does come in this next turn we just switch to Landris but it is going to be the Articuno and we do have the Trick Room as an option right now that we can go for and I don't really feel like my opponent's got anything that they can do to prevent the Trick Room going up I mean they do have knockoff but knockoff plus whatever the Articuno does is just not going to be enough I don't think so I think what we'll do is we will Flare Blitz, the Rillaboom, will Trick Room, and that should be enough to kind of close the game up. Unless this Articuno, like, surprises me. But, you know, it's weird. Like, I'm taking my time with this game, and it's solely because, and this is probably a good thing for, especially new players coming in, and maybe even more experienced players, because when you come up against a Pokemon that you're not really too familiar with, and now you can say this 100% about Articuno, it's a Pokemon that you're going to see uh, in the games from Gen 1, but you're never really going to see too much of on the competitive side. You saw very, very, well, it, well, it was actually pretty decent in, in Gen 1 singles back in the day, back in the very first tournaments. It wasn't a bad option. But since then, you've not really seen it at all. I do like it as a Pokemon. 100% love it as a Pokemon. I think it's a great Pokemon. But when you don't really know about it and you haven't seen it, it's not something you spend or invest too much time in like looking at and saying, oh, well, what's this do? This has got this option, this option, this option, which for most of the Pokemon, I know 
they've got this option, they can do this, they can wide guard, they can fake out, they can intimidate, etc, etc. But with Articuno, it's it's like, okay, I have no idea what it's doing. And for those sort of Pokemon, it's scary because they're the Pokemon that can really catch you out. And I, I, I'm going to take an example here, my friend Jamie Boy. Ah, oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm in the middle of something here. I'm in the middle of something, the salt. <laughs> Marco, get me the salt, boys. Um, All right, well, good game to Marco. Good friend Jamie Boy. I'm going to finish this off. He uses really like obscure Pokemon. We had that locked. We had that locked and loaded a long time before this. Um, but yeah, he uses obscure Pokemon. And you know, I'm not taking away anything from him being an amazing player because he is and he's very innovative and he builds like no one else does. But when he goes into battle, everyone he plays has the same exact feelings playing cautiously. It was us. Oh, are you kidding? Are you kidding? It was us. And that's what I mean. And you just have to be very, very patient against these Pokemon. Kind of try and eke out as much information as you can against them. Oh, I can't believe that. I cannot believe that. Okay, well, friends, uh, I'm going to take it as a win. And we, we saw the team do its thing. So we're going to just jump straight into our next one. So we'll be, we'll be right back when we find the next opponent. Firstly, I have to apologize to Marco for accusing him of, 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 of the salt. So... Marco, if you're out there, my friend, good game. Sorry for the disconnect. It wasn't intentional. Everything seems to be online. It seems to be something wrong with my Switch. So, um, And then, secondly, we've got our next opponent with a very interesting username. Uh, I've got to say I do <laughs> kind of appreciate it. Uh, but they're playing a team of Whimsicott, Mamoswine, Incineroar, Thunderous, Tapu Fini and Calyrex Shadow Rider. Got that favorite combination of my, my myself, you know, the Calyrex Shadow Rider and Thunderous. I think it's an incredible combination of Pokemon. It's one of my favorites, I think, in Series 8. I will be revisiting it at some point. I've got an absolute fire team. So if you want to see that, let me down in the comment section below. But what are we going to do against this team? This is a little bit more tricky, of course. You've got the Calyrex Shadow Rider. You've got the Thunderous. It makes it very difficult for us to bring in Cinero because if we do, we proc the Defiant. Obviously, we can deal with the Calyrex but it makes things it makes things very very difficult for us to kind of operate um so I think what we're going to do we're going to play a little game we're going to play a little game and this is why we've got Thunderous in this team so we're going to bring Necrozma we're going to bring Thunderous we're going to bring um Incineroar and we are going to bring do we want Indeedee do do or I think we want Tapu Fini in this one so we'll bring the Fini and this is one of the golden moments of the team because you're all probably sitting there thinking he's got Defiant Thunderous. Well, I will tell you again, as much as I love Defiant Thunderous, Thunderous is one of my favorite Pokemon. This is actually a prankster Thunderous and it's in this team for a specific reason and I'm pleased we're going to be able to kind of explore it and have a look at it right now because if it works, it's going to be beautiful and I'm not even kidding. It's going to be absolutely amazing if we can get this to work. So there's no sense of the Defiant procking right now so they're just like ah they're gonna be defiant defiant thunderous here we go here we go so what we're gonna do is we are gonna go for an eerie impulse into the calyrex and we are gonna go for a just 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 i just want to just see what pokemon they've got that could be a problem for uh not much i mean the mama swine potentially incineral potentially but i think if we get the defense boost right now we're gonna be all right so Let's not time out. Let's go for Eerie Impulse into Calyrex. And let's go for that Max Steel Spike. And let's see what this Calyrex can do on minus two to our Max Dustman Necrozma. Let's hope it doesn't max because I think the one thing that I don't want to see is the, the Calyrex maxing here. I think it would be... It makes it a bit more difficult because it's obviously going to hit a bit more. It's going to hit a bit harder. You're expecting the life orb on it, of course. It's the, probably the best option to go with it on. I'm hoping we see like, ooh, switcheroo. Don't like that if that's an eject button, which it is. <sighs> okay, well this just got a lot harder. I hate eject button, and it's always that thing I forget about. Eject button. Okay, well there's the Astro Barrage. See if that worked. Look at the damage, does nothing. But our weakness policy procs, and uh, we're done. We're done in this one, but we can bring in Cinero in. We're not, it's not over yet. <sighs> it could have been so good. Could have been so good. Could have been so good. Really could have. 
<laughs> We've got to be careful now because the Thunderous can come onto the field and we don't want to we don't want to proc a defined boost by snarling here. I think we have to be a little bit smarter with what we're doing. So um we could potentially try. I think I prefer to get rid of the Whimsicott if anything. Um and we could Thunderbolt into the Calyrex Ice Rider. We could Eerie Impulse again. I don't really feel like we need to, though. I think. Because um, we really want to try and get the Duskmen onto the field. I think the Calyrex switches out here. I think the Calyrex switches out. And Thunderous comes onto the field. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go Necrozma. And... We're going to go Parting Shot as well into Whimsicott. Because we don't want to catch the Thunderous. Yeah, okay. So the Calyrex is switching out. That's a Finny coming in. Okay, the Thunderous might not be coming to this match. Oh, we should have Thunderbolted. Imagine if we Thunderbolted like we originally thought. That was the idea. Just get a Thunderbolt onto the field. Kind of want to keep Thunderous around a little bit later. The fact is, though, that I don't think the Whimsicott's got Taunt. So we can probably set up our Trick Room pretty freely here. Um, see what we see. Tailwind. That's ideal. Okay, that's perfect. The parting shot would have been better into the Finny, but you you can see the reason and why we didn't want to go that that route because, um, oh, losing our Dynamax though is, is terrible. Um, now we can bring in Thunderous again. I think that's not a bad play, and we can eerie impulse the Finny. Just really neuter it. Make sure that it's not doing any damage to us. The Whimsicott's pretty weak as it is. We can set a Trick Room while we're here. An eerie impulse into the finny, and we can just kind of carry on doing that until until thunderous is no longer needed. Uh, but we do pressure the finny as well. The problem is if the uh, if the the, the if thunderous does come in now, but I would expect it to have already come in. Um, knowing that incineroar would have been you know something that's likely to click snarl, it's likely to parting shot. Um, so I don't think they've got it in the back. I'm kind of just surmising here. So we're going to have to try and eke our way through this one. Help in hand. Well, we can do that, but it's not going to be too much help, I don't think. I mean, you probably chase down the Thunderous here. Max guys are coming out. We're going to be able to really make sure that this Tapu Fini does nothing in this match. Yeah, it's just going to proc our Citrus Berry. Thunderous acting like an absolute champ. Right here. Um, yeah. And we can start Sunsteel striking with Necrozma as we get a Trick Rumor, which we're in a really good position now. Um, I think we got Sunsteel Strike into... Hmm, the Whimsicott's probably the one to go after. Although... Yeah, I think we got Sunsteel Strike into Whimsicott. We'll go for another. I mean, we could Brutal Swing here as well. I think we don't do it this turn. I think we take the Finny down to minus four. Make it very difficult for my opponent to really get any anywhere, any momentum with this type of Finny here. Oh, they're giving us uh, the, the weakness. Okay, they're taking the weakness policy. I don't mind. You lose your... I mean, Finny's losing its leftovers, so I don't really really mind about that at all um, and we're, not, we're just not going to hit it with a Thunderbolt now so Wimmy going down very hard very hard okay Miss Finny what's the damage going to be like let's see you're pretty whiffy without a calm mind anyway right Ooh. <laughs> you've got to love it you've got to love it you've got to try this Eerie Impulse Thunderous out. I promise you, you will not regret it. I've went for Scary Face as well, so you can reduce the speed on... Um, oh, should we Brutal Swing? We're going to be slower than the Mama Swine, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Thunderous will be slower than the Mama. The Mama will be jolly, right? The only issue would be here is if, if we saw an Ice Shard... So this should take the Mammoth Swine down to its sash, is what I imagine the item is on it. And then the Brutal Swing. Yeah. The Brutal Swing should proc... Oh, it's not going to proc our weakness policy, is it? But it will just knock out the Mammo. I forget that we've got the... Uh, we've lost our weakness policy, which is a little bit of a shame. But 
or kind of alright. Scary Face, as I say, is there for Reggie Alecki um, and Landorus and things like that. The Landorus is in the team, so you can lead Thunderous. Oh, we take that as well. It's in the rain. Come on, guys. This is beautiful. Beautiful. Um, yeah, the, the, the Landorus is there to... Um, <clears throat> Uh, to one shot Charizard in the Sun teams, one shot Venusaur in the Sun teams. It's got Life Orb, so it will take down Max Charizard and minus one. There's lots of options there with it. So, um, and even after that first turn of the eject button, this is this is getting better, I guess. So we have to e impulse and go for the Calyrex, don't we? It's going to hit us pretty hard. It's going to take down the Thunderous, but at this point, it, we're kind of all right. The Finny protecting. I don't care about the Finny at this point. We only care about the uh, Calyrex. So let's see what you do. And the Prism Armor with this kind of backing up. This is this was the whole premise of like my idea about the, this sort of team. So I don't think the Sunsteel Strike would be enough to take down the Calyrex. Or am I going to be surprised by Dustman and Crossma? That's the big thing. Nah. Calyrex is just too chunky. But on minus two, it's just not going to be doing the damage it needs. Whew. Still doing a lot of damage though, isn't it? Still doing a lot of damage. But Thunderous, I mean, putting in the work. It does negate one of those attack boosts, but at the same time, um, we've still got Insin to come in. And then we've got Tapu Fini to end the game if we need to. So we can fake out Tapu Fini, Sunsteel Strike, the Calyrex. Um, and then we're in a great spot because another Sensual Strike will get the Calyrex for sure. And they could protect. And we are probably going down to, yeah, we've got one turn of Trick Room. Calyrex, have you got Protect? Now I know I run Protect on my Calyrex. I definitely do. But what we're going to do is just fake out the type of Finny, go for it. I don't think we're in any position where we need to worry about it too much. No protects coming out, so we're going to be able to remove the Calyrex, and that pretty much seals the game up right here and there for us. Because once the Calyrex is gone, you can see it's still hitting super hard on the minus two, and it's still only minus one at the minute. But the fact is, they've not got protect, so we can kind of punish that a little bit better. And the Trick Room here coming in so useful for us. Um, so the rain's stopping, and all we need to do is, well get a Tapu Fini onto the field and deal with this this opposing one because it's not really going to have any kind of impetus to be able to do um, any damage to us and with Incineroar here it's minus four we'll put it down to minus five tick it down to minus six and then just start chipping it with our own Tapu Fini which is ideal so it might take a little bit of time the other option is we can try and maneuver ourselves into a board position where we can get um, uh, Incineroar Necrozma out onto the field. Oh, Tapu Fini avoids. That's no good. That's no good. Has this Finny not got um, Calm Mind? It might not. If it hasn't, then uh, the battle's cancelled. So there we go. So very good game to my opponent. Um, and we do manage to pick up a win against RNG is... Um, but yeah, very good game. And uh, Thunderous there was just incredible. So that is the one thing about the team. I've kind of skimmed over some of the other matchups where you can make use of this and, and deal with them. Uh, there wasn't much need to put uh, a hard specific sun check in the team because between Thunderous and Landorus, you've got a really good option between the two to kind of deal with those. Um, I think the same with the Calyrex Shadow Rider as well. Um, and then obviously Calyrex Ice Rider. Well, Necrozma kind of deals with that, especially with the double intimidate. There. You've got lots of options. I think this really works and complements each other really nicely. So I would love to know if you do try it out. And uh, with that, we'll jump over and get you guys the rental code. Here it is. Here is the rental code for today's team. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Like I said, there's some kind of different uh, approaches to using some of these Pokemon. And I think there's some nice synergy between them as well. Obviously, the Eerie Impulse Scary Face is incredible on Pranks the Thunderous. It's not expected. And in team preview, this is what I mean going back to that best of one scenario where it maybe works a little bit better. And they see the Thunderous 
paired up with the Dustman Necrozma, it makes sense to have the Defiant there. So they're going to be a little bit dubious about leading with that Intimidate user straight away, which can give you quite a few opportunities here to, you know, disrupt with Thunderous, set your Trick Room up if you need to. So there's lots of options there. And uh, you can see the utility of it. The Brutal Swing's there to self-proc your weakness policy if you don't get Eject Buttoned or anything like that, which is always useful. Um, and the rest of the team, like I've explained, the Indeedy's there. Heal Pulse helps out the Necrozma, especially with that Trick Room, and especially because we don't have Protect we've opted for the photon geyser which i personally feel gives you an extra dimension with necrozma the protect is invaluable i'm not going to deny that but the fact is if you get the trick room up and you're against something like charizard um something that you know resists the the ground and the, the steel moves at least you've got a way to hit it especially if your weakness policy is procced and you can do the damage that you need to kind of maybe clinch the battle in some of the situations some of you might prefer the protect and there's definitely arguments for both there but it's definitely something i wanted to probably portray a bit more on this team uh today than than the protect i think it's a nice option especially because you kind of take advantage of the psychic terrain as well Incineroar Landorus make a lot of sense. The Landorus is there, obviously, for an option to uh, kind of take advantage of the fake out support you've got with the Incineroar, the Eerie Impulse support, the Scary Phase support. You can get a Sword Stance up with specific board position and then the, the, the Indeedy as well with the Redirect. So all in all, team very nice. The Finney's there. It acts a lot like those Dialga teams that you're going to see where you're kind of boosting up your defense stats with Necrozma, you kind of want Tapu Fini in there a lot of the time, so you can calm mind up as well, get the Sun Steel Strikes off, Max um, Steel Spikes off, get those defenses boosted up, and then Finny is pretty much unstoppable after you get those defense boosters. So there's lots of options with the team. I'm gonna leave it there because I don't want this going on too long. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Thank you as always for tuning in, friends, and we'll be back on Friday with another team to feature in series eight so until then friends take care of yourselves have a great rest of your day whatever time of day it is and i'll uh, i'll see you all for the next one so until then take care bye bye